switched over. Now, in the spring months, around September, October, the knobthorns are the first trees to get their first new spring green leaves. And as a result, if you watch in spring, they are the trees that immediately start to get hammered, essentially, by the elephants of the area. And what they do, actually, is they provide some serious help to the various browsers that aren't quite able to reach as high as the elephants are. Sorry, there's an interesting starting fight going on. <laughs> that's really interesting. So that's the Birchall starling, that's the largest starling. It's being chased by two greater blue-eared starlings, which are much, much smaller. Well done, Jandre. Sorry, I know I said I was going to make your life easier than Dave's, I've just made it harder. Chandre <laughs> proving how awesome his camera work skills are. Yeah, or, not. Or, or not. No, no, that was marvellous. I just found it fascinating that the, the smallest starlings were chasing the biggest starling. I think it was just advantage of numbers. Weren't they? I don't even know where they went. No, oh, I can sort of see them. One, yeah, I can sort of see them between the tree branches. Fascinating. Just goes to show there are certain species of bird that are aggressive and almost bullish in their approach. Starlings are one. Um, barbets are another. Barbets I have seen a bully several different bird species. Drongos are definitely high up on the list. And then something we learned from Brent's sighting not too long ago, the lapwings that were chasing the little three-banded plover around the edge of Buffalo's of Dam. I mean, completely bizarre. And you watch them and you know that it's a, a sort of a product of competition, but I have no idea what upset those starlings so, except perhaps an invasion of personal space. But half the time they're quite content to sit with a sort of mixed combination of Birchall starling, Greater Blue-Eared, Cape Glossy, all together. And for some reason those two starlings took exception to their Birchall's friend. And all in all, our elephants haven't even bothered to look up. That nick is familiar in that ear. It looks as though somebody actually neatly cut a piece out of that. That's not what happened, of course. That is a naturally a natural shape. He probably pricked or cut himself in some way, and then the flies settled in, and the ticks settled in, and the bacteria settled in and eventually ate away a piece of his ear that will be with him for the rest of his life, or at least that scar will be with him for the rest of his life, making him easily identifiable. But that's a really in, a really clear one. It really does look like somebody took a... Ooh, no, that gives me the shivers. I don't mean it like that. Not harming him in any way, and will just mean that whenever we see this young bull, we will re immediately recognize him. Although we've got so many different elephant characters, it is completely impossible for us to keep track of them all. With the added fact that they tend to move and cover enormous distances. So as I said, they've created a really nice situation here, where they've pushed over a knobthorn tree with some fresh green leaves at the top. They're not fully spring green yet, but they are fresh and they will be, there will be other browsers coming here as soon as these gentlemen have finished. The Nyala, the Bushbuck, well no, not the Bushbuck in this area, but the Nyala and the Kudu and many other browsers will move in and start to feed off the freshly pushed over tree.